a morning in March in Quang Ngai province, the Chakuk River. When I came back to Vietnam, I brought my violin with me from America because I wanted to give an offering to the spirits of the dead at My Lai and for those still living at My Lai that would speak from the deepest part of myself. The sound of the violin in me lie. My name is Mike Bain, and I was born in 1947, the year of the pig. I'm the oldest of seven children. I have three younger brothers and three younger sisters. We had a difficult childhood, and I feel the strength that I gained from overcoming those difficulties has given me the strength to do the work that I'm doing in Vietnam today. And in fact, I think there's a parallel that I brought my life out of the ashes and now out of the ashes of me lie, we're doing this work today. When I first heard about the massacre at Milai, I was horrified and I was angry. And I, in my mind, called the American soldiers every name I could think of, every bad name, because I was trying to put distance between myself and them. But as I've grown up and matured, I realized that it could have been me. I would hope not. I would hope I would do the right thing like Hugh Thompson. But since we are all of us, capable of evil. So we need to, the lesson to be learned from Eli, one of the main lessons is that we must cherish our children, we must teach our children to be strong. So if something like Eli comes up again, they have the strength to act honorably and rightly like Hugh Thompson. Well, now here I am in Vietnam 30 years later, and I see the children playing, and they're just children. They, ha they don't have the burden of the war. They have their whole lives ahead of them. And I see the whole country at peace, and that brings me peace. Coming here to Tinghe Village, Sun Ting District, Quang Ngai Province, you will see a typical Vietnamese village, so quiet and peaceful. This village was formerly known as Sơn Mỹ. The name strikes a chord in every one of us. Yes, it was a much heard of name during the war. We wonder why the Americans called the village Mi Lai. It turns out that there is a hamlet in the area called Mi Lai, and the Americans then fail to understand the turn marks. This area is so quiet and so peaceful as if the war had never gone through here. More than anywhere else, the message rings loud and clear here. Life is immortal. Yes. Life has returned to this horrible killing site, a place where on a morning in March 1968, the American army had completely destroyed everything within only four hours. Houses, rice fields, livestock, and 504 villagers, of whom the majority were elderly people, 
women and children. Milai once was known as a nightmare in our human history. In this very place that morning, American soldiers suddenly appeared and sprayed bullets at Mr. Fadad's family, killing 11 of them within a few seconds. A photograph in the World Crime Museum portrayed how Mr. Fadad's elder brother had been killed. Old Mr. Mublai was so frightened that he could not move. He was taken outside and the soldiers tore off his beard for fun. Ronald Hebel, the author of these photos, related, This old man was old and trembling. He looked as if he wanted to scream out. When I left him, I heard two shots go off. This is a well-known photograph. We thought that the old woman was a guerrilla fighter. We asked the local villagers and went to the memorial stella for 97 people killed on that day in Kolui Hamlet. Nobody knew anything about her. But later, we were able to find out her son's family. Like the rest of the village, his family burns incense on the family altar today to remember the dead. This is the picture of your grandmother. You should always remember her. Under this tree, there was a bomb shelter belonging to Mrs. Fan family. When the American GI came, everybody ran to the shelter. The soldiers took her out, pointed their guns at her head, opened fire and threw her body into the shelter. Then they killed her husband, her 15-year-old daughter and her two-year-old grandson. The four of them were buried here together. <laughs> a few hundred meters away from Mr. Fabdat's house is a gone tree, which everyone knows because it was in Hubble's photo. The picture was taken under this tree 30 years ago and appeared in the Life magazine on the 19 January 1970 with the caption, there was a 13-year-old girl among them. A GI grabbed her and stripped her clothes off. Let's see what she's made of, said one soldier. VC Boom Boom, said another, hinting that she was a whore for the VC. While the soldiers stripped her off, her mother dashed to her rescue, scratching and clawing at the soldiers. Everywhere houses were on fire, dead bodies laying around. What are we going to do with them? said one GI. Kill them, another answered. Robert said, I heard an M60 go off, and when I turned, all of them and the kids were dead. And Nikoli, the mother, wife and children of a Saigonese government official were among these people. Mrs. Lee is lucky. She was one of the rare survivors of the massacre. This is the memorial stellar for 102 people, mostly women and children, who were killed along this road that day. Hubble's nervous system must have been made of steel to be able to take these pictures. A baby was killed, still hanging on its dead mother's breast. Mrs. Lee and her son were spared because they buried themselves under the bodies of three or four villagers. Nearby, her nephew Chung Boon was laying on top of his brother Chung Nam to shield him from the bullets. Both of them were killed. <laughs> Mrs. Nyung and Sister Nyang are also survivors of the massacre, but their survival was somewhat special. They were saved by the helicopter crew, Hugh Thompson, Larry Colburn, and Glenn Andriota. We survived because these Americans waved to us and took us on their helicopter. Thanks to them, I'm still alive today. They shot like mad then. When they came, I ran for the shelter. A helicopter landed near us. 
The men waved and we came out. They pushed us onto the ship and took off. We were dead scared. Were they going to drop us into the sea? After some time, the helicopter landed and they signaled us to run away. It was only then that we knew we had been saved. Would you be able to recognize these people when you see them? Well, how could we? It's been 30 years. It's been too long. If we see them, we can just thank them. The only American casualty on that day was a black soldier, Hubert Carter, who could not stand such mad killing. He shot himself in the foot so that he could not have to take part in the massacre. Herbert later related, I saw an old man standing in the middle of the rice field, waving at us in a friendly manner, but they shot him. I saw no victim in the village, only poor farmers running away from their burning huts, and then they shot them dead. Ronald Radenauer was serving in Quang Ngai during 1967-1968. He had patiently collected evidence about the massacre and was determined to expose it to light. Forty black and white and 18 color photos of the massacre taken by Rona Herbo became important evidence of the crime before the American and international public opinion. Many scholars and veterans of the world believe that the Milai massacre is the darkest spot in the history of the American military. Conscious people like Thompson had seen it and reacted right away against the massacre. The Milai massacre trial was the longest and most controversial trial in the U.S. It involved 500 witnesses and 23,000 pages of documents. In this trial, Lieutenant Kali, a low-ranking officer in the U.S. Army, was sacrificed as a scapegoat. Kelly is now an old man who owns a jewelry shop in Columbus, Georgia. He was not haunted by the massacre. The 30th ceremony of the massacre is being held at the Midlife War Crime Memorial. The memorial was built in 1976 over an area of 24,000 square meters of the former Thuận Yên hamlet. Fifteen families here had been totally annihilated by the American GI. Today, true to the promise of our soul, we are gathered here on this heroic and war-torn land to remember 504 of our people who were killed by American aggressors on the 16th of March 1968 and also to share our joy with the people here for all the changes that have been taking place in Tinghe Sun Mi. I'm honored to be invited here for the opening of the Peace Park and to view the monument Tôi rất hân hạnh được chuyển mời lên phạm biểu và tôi cũng là thay mặt cho nhóm công viên hòa bình ở Quảng Ngãi. May we never forget again. May we never forget the brutality and the heartbreak of war. Và mong rằng chúng ta sẽ không ai quên vào những ngày hôm đó một ngày hết sức là tàn bạo. To everyone in the world, if we could practice patience understanding, cultural understanding, and love. Last week I learned a lesson from my six-year-old son. A writer once wrote, this land is the witness of a terrible crime but it is also a holy land of goodness and salvation. Many Americans have found their way to this land. They were shocked by this horrible, dark past event, an event that took place at the time when they were in their 20s. Are they searching their soul on their journey to the promised land? Every year, 
Mi'lai receives 50,000 visitors, of which 500 groups are from overseas. In this year's ceremony, two important visitors have been invited, Hugh Thompson and Lawrence Corburn. The story runs like this. Hugh Thompson was a helicopter pilot in the U.S. Army, Lawrence Corbin, a dog gunner, and Glenn Andrew, a navigator. They were flying over this field in the morning of March 16, 1968. From above, they looked down and just could not believe what they saw. The American soldiers were herding the village women and children into a ditch and opened fire on them. Shocked, the team flew to the village. Thompson saw a little wounded girl in the field. He dropped a smoke flare for medical assistance. A U.S. captain ran to the place and shot her dead. Then they saw a group of American soldiers chasing about 10 farmers. They landed the helicopter right in front of the pursuing soldiers. Thompson ordered the door gunner to point his machine gun at the soldiers and said that they would shoot if the soldiers moved forward. Then Thompson ordered two wheel helicopters to land and get the farmers to safety. When the crew flew along a ditch, Andruta saw something moving along a heap of dead bodies. Thompson landed his helicopter. Andruta waded through the bodies and picked up a little boy, all covered in blood, but was still alive. They took him to Guangai Hospital. That year, Colbert was only 19 and Thompson was 25. According to the American media, in 1969, Thompson refused to take a flying cross medal because he thought that the U.S. Army wanted to buy his silence. But finally, 30 years later, a week before Thompson and Colbert's arrival at Mi'ilai, the U.S. government did the right thing. They respectfully awarded the soldiers' medal to Thompson, Colbert and Andrew Ta for their bravery. Andrew Ta did not leave to get his medal. He died in the battle just three weeks after he had saved the little boy. This is Andruta's picture. His family sent it to us when this film was being made. Today, only Thompson and Colburn are here back in Mi'lai. They want to meet the people they had rescued before. This is Mr. Thompson. Thank you very much. And uh, 30 years has passed and now you come back here. And, uh, and uh, at the time, on that night, you rescued and helped me to uh, go over the massacre. And thank you very much. And we are very happy to see you here. And without your help, you would have died. So, you know, 30 years has passed, and now I am very sincerely thank you. Oh, no, come on. He was with me that day. Thank you for your help, and uh, took us out of uh, that uh, situation. Otherwise, we should have been died. And thank you very much once again for your great help. Among those who were saved by Thompson, Colburn and Androta, only Mrs. Nyang and Mrs. Nyung are still living in the village. The four members of Mr. Khai's family and the three members of Mr. Thor's family have already moved to other places. Well, you know, you all to know that not every American that day went crazy. There were more than us, more than Larry and I, that uh, did not take part in the massacre. Trong cái ngày hôm đấy không phải là bất cứ người lính Mỹ nào họ cũng đồng ý tham gia vào cái cái vụ thảm sát này, mà có rất nhiều người. Chúng tôi chỉ là một trong số những người chống lại cái hành động đó. Thưa ông Tâm Sơn và ông Cô Bân, tôi là tôi là con của bà cụ đã được các ông cứu trong năm 1968. I'm the I'm the son of my ma, of my ma, of my mom. Oh, who uh, rescued my mom in 1968. And uh, now today we see each other. I have to say we sincerely thank you for what you did.
to my family. Yes. What do you remember of that day? Anh nhớ còn nhớ cái gì về cái ngày hôm đấy không? Cái ngày hôm nay cũng là cái ngày mà đau buồn của gia đình chúng tôi. Bởi vì And... vào ngày này là cách đây 30 năm thì cha tôi cũng đã bị đồng đội các ông sát hại. And today is also just a very bad day for our, fa for our family because uh, my father died because of the American soldiers who killed my dad now on that day 30 years ago. Người mà gây ra tội ác thì chúng tôi luôn luôn ghi nhớ nhưng người kiểu ăn nhân đã giúp gia đình chúng tôi thì chúng tôi luôn trân trọng. Như ông là đã có vợ được mấy con à? So, uh, Mr. Thompson, uh, how many children do you have? I have three boys. À, tôi có ba đứa con trai. À, à, ông là, à, là tôi hiện nay là ba con ba. I also have three. You have three. Uh. <laughs> Hello. Nhỏ thấy chưa? And uh, but they are still young. Uh. They still here. Yeah. Uh. You were real young then. Yeah. How old? How old were you? Um, invite Ooh. you to have coffee together with some uh, food <laughs> from our garden. Uh, this is from your garden. Thank you. Uh, I feel renewed. I feel fulfilled to see a family that's survived and continued to thrive and survived the, the tragedy and the heartbreak of war. I sincerely hope we can learn from our mistakes and become a peaceful world and and not ever let atrocities like this happen again. Here, it's very rewarding. Uh, there's a lot of sorrow. There's a lot of happiness. There's a lot of shame. Uh, there's a lot of anger, and anger. Is, is not directed at the Vietnamese people, it's directed at my fellow soldiers who went crazy that day. And I'm, I'm just real sorry that my crew could not have done more. I'm extremely sorry for my fellow Americans for what happened. It wasn't right, it wasn't war, and I pray to God something like this never happens again. <laughs> Thompson and Corburn are back to meet Lai to attend the 30th anniversary of the massacre. They also want to meet the boy they had rescued from the ditch. The boy's name is Do Ba. Mike Bohm told us. When they were taking the boy to Quang Ngai Hospital, Corburn turned to look at Thompson and he saw tears were running down his face. Corburn knew that Thompson had a son the same age back in the States beyond the ocean. But the boy is not at home, so they go to the village primary school to talk to the children. the thank yous that have been given to the People's Committee of the province and the district and all the people who have traveled so many miles to come here and attend this ceremony. Trước nhất chúng tôi xin cảm ơn Ủy ban nhân dân tỉnh, Ủy ban nhân dân huyện Sơn Tịnh và tất cả các đồng bạn từ các nơi đã về đây ngày hôm nay. We cannot forget the past. Chúng tôi không thể nào quên được quá khứ. But we cannot live with anger and hatred either. Và cũng đồng thời chúng tôi không thể sống trong sự đau khổ trong sự tức giận. So today we put that anger and hatred behind, but we remember the past and learn the lessons from the past. À, nhưng tôi chúng tôi phải dẹp qua cái sự giận dữ đó, cái sự hận thù đó để mà làm được cái điều tốt đẹp trong tương lai. Now with this new park for peace for Mi Lai. Và đây là cái công viên hòa bình của Mi Lai. Yeah. My chairman will also will come over here very often. Mike is the director of the Mi Lai Peace Park project. Besides building a park here, the project also wants to provide assistance for the local hospital 
build a new 20-room primary school and expand a revolving loan fund for the poor women in Mi Lai. This project has 30 members on its advisory board who are famous people all over the world, including Professor Noam Chomsky, Don Luz, Gaur Vida, and Archbishop Desmond Tutu from South Africa. The Peace Park in Vietnam was inspired by a visit by a North Vietnamese Army veteran to a Wisconsin Vietnam Veterans Memorial in 1990. This experience was so profound that a poem was written a few days later by one of the Americans saying that I looked into the eyes of my enemy and saw myself. To kill him would be suicide, to love him salvation. That experience was the inspiration for the Vietnamese American Peace Park. When I came to Vietnam, I was young, just like almost all the American soldiers that came over here. We were, we were children, 17, 18, 19 years old, and we believed our government. We believed our parents who told us that we were doing the right thing for the people of Vietnam. And we came to Vietnam and we saw it was a lie. But it was too late. We had to do things that we can't live with just to survive. And now many American veterans have committed suicide. Many have been overcome by drugs, alcohol, some sleep on the streets. And many feel like me, that we must live our lives now to help the Vietnamese people to somehow overcome the past. I came back to Vietnam from 1992, my first time since the war. I was overcome by many emotions, anger, guilt, remorse, and I felt that I needed to do something more for the, for the Vietnamese people. So I came to My Lai and I gave an offering of music to the spirits of the dead, of the dead Vietnamese people and the dead American people. I played my violin, but I felt I needed to do even more because the Vietnamese people were hurt physically, but the American people were almost destroyed spiritually. that I play, although I am not very skilled, comes from my heart. And it expresses my feelings and my emotions more than words ever could. I thought of two tunes to play, and I thought for a long time. Those tunes, Ashokan's Farewell and Taps, represent songs from our own civil war where brother fought brother. And it's the first tune is a is a symbol of reconciliation and peace within our country. The second short tune is farewell to those who have died in war. Farewell and rest in peace. Now the American friends and the CBS team are heading for the airport to get back to their busy life in America. Tim Larimer, a Time reporter in Hanoi, wrote in his article on the 16th of March 1998, Uncle Sam has given nothing. Mi Lai is still a poor area where people scratch out their living from the soil and from the sea.
Yes, Milai has somehow revived, but it still is a poor place. It is not easy to build up something from such disastrous past. Assisting these people in the rebuilding of Milai into a prosperous land where people have enough to eat and happy life will be the hope and the wish of everyone near and far. Mike, we believe you will be back to meet Lai with your violin and play new tunes. To their future. 